we are on to problem 13.2 from the fundamentals of chapter 13. Um, this problem gets a little tricky just because it has, um, they give you more information than necessary. So they give you uh, the static coefficient of friction and the kinematic or the kinetic coefficient of friction. Right, one of them is going to be, the, once the object is moving, friction isn't as, uh, as uh, large of a force as it is to get the object moving. So, you know, whenever we move anything, it's always harder to make it move than once it's moving, it's a little easier. Right, so you can think about it like if you have your calculator with you and you have it on a flat surface, you begin to push it, right, and it's, if you just barely t like push on it, it's not going to move, right? So that's because friction, which is acting, counteracting, so this is friction, this is a, your push, is counteracting that calculator <coughs> being pushed, right? But as you increase your, your force, right, then the calculator begins to move and your friction gets a little smaller, right? But you know that your push force, right, plus your friction force, right, will give you a resultant, right, a resultant force here. And we know that when we have a resultant force, when we sum up uh, vectors and everything like that, or, or forces, if there's a resultant, that means there's some acceleration, right, because F equals MA. So if this term is not zero, then that means there is an acceleration, okay? So this is a little background. Um, so what we're gonna do here, uh, and, and what you should do, is whenever they give you the static coefficient friction and the kinetic one, you wanna try both, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is just say, okay, Fs is mu s, so that's the friction, static friction, and then mu fk is mu k times the normal. If we look at the diagram, right? What are my forces? Well, I have my normal force. I have the weight, which is just mg. There is a friction force I'm trying to counteract the, the movement, and then there is this force. Okay, there is the uh, from the force exerted by the motor, okay, and we'll call it, well, well, they just call it F, okay, so in the y direction, let's just start with that, because the y direction is going to be a little simpler, right, because there's no acceleration in the y direction, all right, so then that means my force is in the y direction, which is just positive n minus mg, equals zero, which means that the normal force is just equal to the weight of that object. Okay, so knowing this, I can go into here and say, okay, point three times mg equals, and this should give you uh, 73 point five seven five newtons the kinetic friction term is going to be 0.25 times mg and that's equal to um, let's see uh, 61.3125 newtons okay well point 61.3125 newtons okay now, the force that they're applying is it's time dependent, okay? So F equals 10T squared plus 100, okay? So if I evaluate the force at time equals zero, so right at the beginning, right? T squared is just zero if you plug in zero for T, and then you get 100. Now, what, it, what is this telling us? the initial force being applied on the box is 100 newtons okay at time just from the very get-go 
So that means the 100 newtons, it's like going back to the calculator example that I said, 100 newtons is larger than the, the static friction um, force. Okay? So because the static friction force, so this is greater than the static friction, which means that the 100 newtons is enough to have the object move. Okay? If static friction was 101, then that force initially, the object would be at rest. Okay? It wouldn't be enough. So they, they might ask you, how much time would it take for it to begin to move the object? Okay? But not, it's not the case over here. All right, so now we know that this tells us that we need to use the kinetic term because we know the box is moving right from the beginning. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our second equilibrium equation, which is f of x m times ax. <coughs> okay, so we got that. In the x direction, we have only two forces in this case. We have, let's switch colors. I don't like this burnt orange. Yeah, navy blue, Yankee navy blue, baby. All right, so we do um, forces in the, in the x direction. We have minus fk. I said I just left that as f over here because we didn't know which friction force we're going to use, but we know we have to use a kinetic one. So minus fk plus big F equals mass times acceleration in the x, right? And we don't know what that is. We don't know, um, what is it, um, the acceleration in the x direction. We're trying to determine the velocity of the crate at t equals 4, okay? So let's, um, let's plug in some numbers here. So minus 61.3125 plus the function f, which is 10t squared plus 100 equals 25 ax. And like I mentioned before, in the previous videos that we've done, I said if we have constant acceleration, we don't have to worry about integrating, taking derivatives. But as soon as our acceleration is time dependent, it's not constant acceleration, then we have to um, do some integrals. Okay. So let's simplify this further. Um, we should end up getting ax, crunching the numbers. We should get 1.5475 plus 0.4 t squared. Okay. And we know that um, in order to go from acceleration to a velocity, we know that acceleration, let's write it over here, we know acceleration is equal to dv dt. Okay. And our acceleration is time dependent. Okay. So we're gonna have um, let's uh, let's go on this side. So let's bring it over here. So let's go with um, 1.5 Five, four, seven, five, and if you know where to go from here, I suggest you pause it and do it on your own. Um, that way you get um, comfortable. dv dt. So we you know we do this um, differential equation here plus zero point four t squared. Bring the dt to the left hand side dv, right? And then what are our limits of integration here? Well, we know it <coughs> starts at t equals 0, and it goes for 4 seconds. You can just leave it as you know, t if you want to. And over here, it starts at rest, and we're trying to figure out what it is at 4 seconds. Okay? So let's do the right-hand side real quick. That's just vf. Okay. Over here we have 1.5475 t plus 0.4 t cubed divided by 3. Evaluate it from 0 to 4.
All right. So once we do this, you should get the velocity of this crate at time equals four seconds will be equal to 14.72 meters per second. Okay. And that's it. And then we figured out what the velocity would be of what the velocity of the crate would be at four seconds. So remember, um, like I mentioned, look for keywords, key key things that they throw out there. When a problem gives you mu s and mu k, it will most likely want you to say, uh, you know, evaluate it at the point s. So like, it, it, is it moving? Is it at rest? And then use the mu k if it's actually move, moving. They give you a non-constant acceleration term, okay? Um, so, well, the force is non-constant, which means acceleration is also non-constant, right? Because we know that force is proportional to the acceleration. So, um, that means we can't use just regular kinematic equations, you know, xf equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half t squared. And you know the, the other two that follow after this, All right? So we can't use that because it's not just constant acceleration. Um, and then we have to identify that we do know that a dv equals dt, right? The differential format, and then we can proceed from there. All right, guys. Hope this video helps. Um, these problems do get a little more intense, and you, it makes you bring everything from statics and chapter twelve and put everything together. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate it. If you have co questions, comments, just drop a comment down below. And don't forget to like the video. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.